it for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. to listen to the sick podcast with tony maradero 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time boston four montreal three 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le vingt troisième de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground. Your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero live on this Thursday, March 7th. It is uh, two minutes past 10 o'clock, and really nobody really cares that the Montreal Canadiens lost by a score of 4-1 to in Carolina to the Hurricanes. All everyone is talking about right now is, are the Montreal Canadiens going to make a trade Tomorrow, tomorrow's NHL trade deadline day. Will they make it tonight? Will it be in the wee hours of the morning? Is it going to be early tomorrow morning? Is it going to be sometime around noon? Is it going to be right at the 3 p.m. deadline? Is it going to be announced after 3 o'clock as some trades start to filter in and sometimes announcements are made later on? Who has played their last game as a Montreal Canadian? And if the Montreal Canadiens try and go out and get a player that will make them better as of next season, uh, is there a player playing in tonight's game that other teams are looking at saying, hey, you know what? I think this guy could be a really good player going forward. Or are the Montreal Canadiens not even thinking of trying to make a trade like that? What are the Canadians looking at? Are the Canadians looking at trying to stockpile draft picks to try and make a, a trade tomorrow? Are they looking to try and stockpile draft picks to make a trade on draft day? Uh, does that mean that the, the door is closed now for David Savard and the Montreal Canadiens because Toronto, which seemed like a, you know a pretty logical destination, went out and got former Montreal Canadian Joel Edmondson? So many things to discuss, and we're going to get to it with Grant McCagg of Recruits.ca and the DraftCast podcast. But uh, And former scout of the Montreal Canadiens and the Bob Ganey regime, of course, with recruits and recruits.ca. But there's so many things we have to get to. And one of the things that we're going to get to is going to be Energy Transportation Group, one of our proud sponsor, uh, partners and sponsors, of course, Energy Transportation Group. Uh, they are a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America. They are driven to be different. Also, these guys right over here, La Bête TV, brewed in Quebec and a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bête TV offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bête TV, embrace your true nature. Also brought to you in part by Playground. Experience Playground like never before. Enjoy world-class poker, 900-plus gaming machines and weekly events, karaoke Mondays, comedy Wednesdays, live bands on Fridays and Saturdays, and much more. Discover their latest additions, ETC Steakhouse, Drunken Dragons, Exquisite Sushi, the Esperanto Le uh, Cigar Lounge, and Babel Lounge's Mezza and Cocktails. Playground is your ultimate destination for entertainment. Just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. Visit playground.ca for details and Accent Insurance Solutions. Um, with the Sick Podcast, you know, together we go hand in hand, and you know, all insurance isn't created equal, and you know where to find the right solution for you. Accent Insurance. Accent doesn't sell insurance, they shop it for you to find the right product right on the money. Whatever your insurance needs, our home, automobile, or business, call the Accent team today or maybe even call them tomorrow at 514-363-3636. Without further ado, let's bring him in, former Montreal Canadian scout with recruits and recruits.ca. Of course, you can check out the website. You can subscribe for $3.99 per month, monthly subscription. You're going to see that you're never going to cancel your subscription. He's that good. He's got in-depth interviews. He's got scouting reports. He's got mock drafts. He's got details. He's got he's got interviews. He's got everything. Graham McCagg, what's going on? Hey, Tony. Oh, I hope you don't want to talk too much about the game tonight. Lots of other stuff to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk <laughs> a little bit about the game. We're going to talk oh, about the other stuff as well. By the way, I saw on Twitter... And I don't want to take credit for this, but uh, somebody called you the grandfather. So I spoke to uh, I spoke to Agnello and Sammy about it, and the uh, the shirts are on the press right now as we speak. <laughs> so you're gonna oh. have shirts, the grandfather. Okay. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. Humble, Would you like to have the uh, 
the picture of the Godfather, Marlon Brando, or would you like to have your own somewhere in an arena scouting or whatever, or you yeah. on the podcast? You name it, the shirts are being printed. Okay, no pictures of me, please. All right, okay. Um, look, uh, <laughs> before we get to anything, there was a trade earlier this afternoon that the Montreal Canadiens didn't make, so let's get to that. Let's bring it up if we can. The Canadians made the announcement via their Twitter account, and they made it sometime just uh, before 1 o'clock this afternoon. I think we have it. Let's see if we do. If Sammy Agnello Juliana can bring it up at Master Control, I would very much appreciate it. Do we have it? Okay, we don't have it. All right, okay, we don't I have can it. Tell just, you the trade oh. if you don't if you don't remember, Tony. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I have it. It's just that uh, I wanted <laughs> yeah, them to yeah. bring up the uh, the, uh, the the entire picture. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Which I did. Okay. So there, there you go. All right. Jacob Perot goes from Anaheim to Montreal, and uh, of course, Jan Mishak goes from Montreal to Anaheim. Your thoughts? A uh, minor league deal at this point. I don't know, like, uh, Perot, I mean, I had him ranked top 20 in his draft year, but he certainly hasn't. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, he hasn't uh, panned out as, uh, I mean, the talent, top 20 talent all day long, but he's uh, he's yet to figure out just how hard you have to work uh, with that talent to play at the NHL level. I mean, you just can't just get by on natural skill nobody can so um but you know I, and i've talked to scouts since and i went back and looked at my old uh, uh scouting reports and then quotes and you know loads of talent but questions about his character when it comes to how hard he works especially away from the puck it just uh doesn't uh and i mean i looked at his stats and i looked at his last game and it wasn't very pretty um He's got no goals, two assists in his last 12 games. Um, minus nine, two hits. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you could see, like, he's lost his confidence and, uh, and doesn't look very good right now. So uh, change of scenery, I think, is in order for him. Uh, obviously, Mishak's playing better right now, and mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's a lot more competitive, but... Perot's got a lot more natural talent. So what the Canadians, I guess, are hoping, he's still very young, obviously, uh, hoping that he figures it out, uh, you know, figures out that he's got to work harder and maybe train harder in the offseason and uh, figure out everything that he needs to do to be a better pro. Because certainly yeah. the, the talent is there to be uh, to score goals at any level if he can figure out the rest of it, but that's for a lot of guys that never happens. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a, it's a gamble, but for a team that is looking for potential top six, top nine players that can contribute offensively, the more of them, the more potential guys you get, the, the better the odds are that you're going to find six to nine guys that can do that job. So I get why they did it. Uh, Mishak was not going to end up – he was going to be passed on the uh, depth chart by Kapanen and Beck next year probably right away. They're both, yeah, better, yeah. They're both better prospects. So yeah. I didn't see him – I didn't – I just couldn't picture him getting a spot in the uh, Canadians lineup anytime, you know, anytime soon. So why not trade him for a player that has scoring potential but just hasn't uh, – figured out uh, what he needs to do yet to to reach his potential. Uh, you know, when it came across social media, I was all excited when I saw the family name Perot. I said, oh, my God, they were able to to, to grab Gabe Perot from the New York Rangers. And uh, Gabe Perot, of course, played with the U.S. National <laughs> Development for team for a couple of years and was, you know, played with the likes of, uh, of, uh, thought, of uh, Will Smith and Cole Iserman and all those guys. And I said, you know what? Oh, wow. And having a real good year with Boston College with 50 points in 30 games. And, you know, he slipped uh, or he dipped in the draft a, a year ago. A lot of people thought that he was going to go maybe top 15. He ends up going 23rd. Yeah. Uh, but then when I saw the Anaheim Ducks, I said, no, no, it can't be, obviously. Gabe Perot doesn't play for – oh, Jacob Perot plays for them. All right, okay. Uh, I thought, who is this guy? And Yeah, that's it. I thought Jill, I thought Jill Bear Perot when I, when I saw it, Tony. 
That's what I was hoping. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gilbert Perot would have been nice. I think Gilbert Perot was, um, he was obviously first overall, and uh, he was, um, he was, you know, my Scott. dad talks about him to this day. He's like, oh. Gilbert Perot was one of his favorite players. Like, it yeah, was, he, he was really unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, look, I saw some highlights of, of Jacob Perot, and I saw him score. Like, I saw some really amazing hands. As a matter of fact, I even saw, like, a, a Michigan goal, this and that. I asked around, too, and, um, and what I was told was uh, David Perot's skill set Minus the character and the heart and the and the smarts, and I'm like, oh man, well that's mm -hmm. that's 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 and more like uh, <laughs> two know. or three inches shorter too. Like he's not as big as as Perrault either, right? Uh, yeah, Perron. yeah. Sorry, um, David Perrault. Yeah, yeah. I that's not really a good. I don't think a you know because right away they came up with three things and we came up with another of what why they're not similar you know um yeah. yeah i uh i i think maybe the what they're doing here tony is a, they're playing the long game um the late great brian murray uh once traded for uh rob niedemeyer because he knew that uh, scott would uh and they wanted to play together at some point in their career and he left and came back to Ottawa and uh, Brian Burke came in and and he, he managed to sign Scott Niedemeyer because Rob was playing there. So maybe he uh, he picked up uh, he, he picked him up so that when Gabe becomes a free agent in seven years, he'll uh, he'll want to play for the Habs. <laughs> All right. Okay. So for now, look, it, it, he's a Montreal boy, of course. Uh, he's 21 years old. He'll turn 22 on the 15th of April. He was with the San Diego Gulls, which is the American Hockey League affiliate, of course, for the Anaheim Ducks. And his career was going was going nowhere there with Anaheim. And Meshach's career was going nowhere with Montreal. And so, you know, two organizations swapped two young players, hoping that they can jumpstart their careers. And if not, you know, the Canadians get a parole who's a local kid yeah. who's probably going to be happier playing uh, in Laval than he would be playing in San Diego. Maybe. Anyway. Well, hopefully hopefully he's inspired, uh, you know, playing in his yeah. uh, home province for, for the organization that his father uh, played for. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Mishak actually has improved quite a bit this year, and I, I wouldn't say that he was – he'd regressed this year. He, he, was, he made a step. So – uh, you know, I mean, who knows? Maybe Anaheim down the road is looking for that character kind of guy on their fourth line or something. I just think the Canadians are going to want size uh, down there. And, and at center, he's not going to be a center with – he wasn't going to be a center with the Canadians, I don't think, because they've just got too many good young prospects uh, coming up that, that are better. So, yeah, change of scenery for both, and hopefully, hopefully they get oppor better opportunity. Uh, Pro looked, I mean, the last game, they were down a goal or they were up a goal. And mm -hmm. after about four and a half minute mark, he, four minutes left, he didn't see the ice again, right? Uh, protecting the lead. So he's not, uh, it, you know, I think the fall out of favor, playing about 13 minutes a game, third line. And that's not going to be his role. He's either kind of a top six guy that scores or he's not helping you a heck of a lot. So change of scenery, more better opportunity in Laval. And hopefully he starts to score some goals again. Cause he's yeah, got it. Yeah. He's got an NHL shot. It's probably yeah. his best weapon. And if he can uh, get back to using it, score some goals, gain some confidence, um, work hard. You never know. Maybe he can uh, revive his career. Isn't that something former Hab Yannick Perot, whose kids are Jacob, just acquired by the Canadians, of course, Jeremy and Gabe, who's a draft pick of the New York Rangers, and daughter Liliane all play ice hockey. Well, uh, the apple, I guess, didn't fall too far from the tree. All right, okay. Uh, Canadians lose by a score of four to one versus the Carolina Hurricanes. Before, by the way, the Hurricanes supposedly are in advanced talks for uh, Jake Gensel of the Pittsburgh Penguins. You take a look at that team. If they add Gensel, um, what do you think their chances are of going very far in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference? Well, I think the East is wide open this year. Like uh, there's about five or six teams that 
that have a legitimate shot of uh, winning, I think. Nobody's running away with the East, that's for sure. It's pretty tight. So, uh, yeah, they, they, they've they had problems scoring, getting offense going this year, and that will be one more piece for the top six of Vital One, I think, that, uh, that I mean, you get him – you get him with Aho, and that's a pretty nice combo right there. And I think that they could make yeah. some noise. Gensel's been a playoff guy, right? They need they need um, a guy that that has a playoff pedigree that, that has been there and done that. And uh, Gensel certainly. I mean, I saw a stat there. He's one of the one of the best goal scorers, a playoff goal scorers of the past decade. So, uh, yeah, that'd, that'd be a great it- addition for them for sure. Yeah. You have a good chance of being one of the best playoff goal scorers of the last decade if you play with like one of the five best yeah. players of all time. True, you know, but you still got to yeah. put it in the net. You know, yeah, you're right about that. And then again, others are going to debate that Sidney Crosby is not a top five player of all time. Look, so uh, <laughs> sure. I started pretty much watching hockey once again, seventy nine, eighties, and um, for me, um, in my lifetime, so mm. I'm out of a certain age. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, and Sidney Crosby, I think, are the three best players I've ever seen. Well, I mean, he, he, he you have to uh, consider just how uh, all around the player he is, character, yeah. the, the defensive play, everything. When you you put everything in, like, I mean, there's been some other greats <laughs> in that time, obviously. Uh, Eisenman, Messier, Francis, uh, Jager. Jager you know, you, yeah, you can name a bunch, but... Uh, Sydney, uh, I think before he's all said and done, he's going to be right at the top, like top three scorers of all time. Probably Sackick. number two. Another good Maybe one. Number two. What's that? Yeah. Sackick, another good one. Yeah, true. No, there's been some yeah. bad. Lindros, if he didn't yeah. doesn't get hurt. Yeah. You know, he'd be in the conversation too. He was pretty dominant. So some dandies. And yeah, McDavid, some dandies for sure. You, you can't, you know. Yeah, I still got Crosby ahead of him, but obviously Crosby's got a lot less time left than McDavid. McDavid's still going to be in this league for a very long time, at least we hope anyway. Okay, let's bring up the lineups if we can. We're going to start with the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, Aho in between Teravainen and Zvechnikov, Drury with Nekash and um, uh, Bunting, uh, Stahl, Jarvis, Martinuk, Kotkaniemi, Fast, and Neeson. Uh, Slavin and Burns, uh, Brady Shea and Pesci and Orlov and Chatfield in goal was Anderson. Look, I, Bunting, I know we've talked about him. Bunting sat, uh, was a scratch because he's going to be part of the deal for... Uh, you're you're right. If we can, on RDS, they showed some of the players who were a scratch tonight. If we can bring that up. Do we have it? Yeah, I think we do. Okay. Jason Zucker of Arizona, Tyler Toffoli of the Devils. Uh, Barabanov and Duclair of San Jose. Duclair, ultimately, uh, by the way, there was a trade there, which we're going to talk about. Michael Bunting of the Carolina Hurricanes and Matt Dumba. Uh, Speaking of Duclair, um, he was traded along with a uh, seventh-round pick um, to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, And in return, the San Jose Sharks got defenseman Jack Thompson and a third-round pick in 2024. So... There you have it. Uh, West Islander Anthony Duclair is now at Tampa Bay Lightning. <clears throat> you know, Duclair keeps on playing in places where they have great weather. I got to tell you, San Jose, Tampa Bay, Florida. Yeah. Uh, he's got to some pretty pretty nice destinations, I have to say. Not okay. Bad. Um, we've, we've talked about him before, but uh, let's talk about him one more time, and then we're going to move on to the Canadians, okay? I don't even recognize Kakanyemi anymore. I don't know what's happened to him, man. Like it's, we knew that he wasn't getting a lot of ice time. He got ten minutes tonight. It was zeros across the board. He got off to a real good start this season, and I don't know if it's been the last forty games or so, but it's been all downhill. Have you been able to put your finger on what's going on with this player? Honestly, I haven't been watching him uh, um, the last couple months. Haven't been uh, been too busy scouting uh, amateur amateur guys and uh, watching the Habs. So that's the first time I saw him in a while. Came darn close to having an assist. I mean, uh, you know, uh, and it would have been what about his third point in the last forty or something crazy like that. So yeah, he's uh, he he's lost his confidence obviously at this point, and um, 
because he hasn't hadn't been scoring. So um, right now he's uh, he's he's definitely in the midst of his worst slump probably ever as a as a pro. Maybe going back to year two, similar to that yeah. year. So uh, yeah, disappointed. I thought he, he like you say he got off to that great start, and I was saying, see guys, what did I tell you? Just needed some time, and and now uh, yeah, I'm eating those words. So hey. You, you, you can never uh, you can never predict how a career will go. So, obviously, uh, he's still young. Obviously, he can still bounce back. Uh, I mean, he was looking good last year. He had he had made good strides in the start of this year. But I yeah. don't. I can't, I can't explain it, Tony. I don't know. I don't understand. His his first season. From a points perspective, everyone knows there were weaknesses in his game. I mean, the, uh, you know, there were some balance issues, you would think, in his first season. He, he didn't look like he was very, very stable on his feet. But he picked up 34 points in 79 games uh, yeah. as an 18-year-old. I mean, that's that's a pretty con- encouraging stat line. Uh, and uh, and a couple of years after that, he scored a couple of big goals for the Canadians in the playoffs. Even the next year after that, I think he had scored four goals in 10 games in the playoffs. A couple of years after that, he had scored five goals in 19 games when the Canadians made it to the final in the playoffs. That was not too shabby. Like you talked about last year, uh, he had his best year in the National Hockey League where he had 43 points in 82 games. Grant, they say that sometimes when a player enters the National Hockey League too soon, too young, Mm. that he could still have good years, but eventually it catches up with him and it ends up burning him. I wonder if that is what ha- has happened yeah. with Kock and Yemi. Well, you know, we, we could uh, dissect that uh, for hours on end probably. Uh, I don't have the answer for it. Um, he's underachieved. And uh, you can blame a lot of things. And at the end of the day, uh, the onus is on him. I don't know. He's got to get it. He's got to get her straightened around. There's no one else. You can blame uh, Canadian's management. You can blame the scouts for picking him. You can blame whatever. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the player, and he's not uh, getting it done. So, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm as big as Booster. I hope he turns it around and and becomes a uh, the top two center that a lot of us thought that he would be. And uh, Obviously, right now that doesn't look like it's it's happening. Yeah, uh, Grant is a very big booster. As a matter of fact, if his battery would ever go dead, he'd be there to give him a boost. I thought that That's was right. funny. Probably not. All right, okay. Let's uh, bring up the Montreal Canadiens lineup if we can. Special, you know, want to say hello to everyone watching us. By the way, on YouTube Live, on Facebook Live, and on Twitter Live. And I want to mention, by the way, that uh, the past couple of nights have been pretty awesome. So two nights ago, we had the most people on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter that we've ever had. It was over 1,400. And last night, we broke our record and ended up being the most people we've ever had on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter ever. We had 3,732 people on at the same time last night. Excellent. All right. Right now we have uh, about 1,300, and we hope to be able to pass that number of 3,732. We hope to be able to do it tonight. So I think we're going to give you a pretty good show. Okay. Suzuki with Slavkowski and Caulfield. Newhook with Armia and Joshua Roy. Evans with Anderson and Gallagher. RHP with Yulanin and Pearson. On defense, Matheson Gooley. Jack Guy Savard, Struble Harris, and Samuel Montembeau got the start in goal. Let's bring up the score sheet if we can. All right, there you have it. Joshua Roy, which looked like, um, you know, a rather inoffensive shot, but he's coming down the left wing and uh, he takes a quick shot. No, the left wing was the second goal, which, which was disallowed. Anyway, he cuts to the middle. He takes a quick shot, which I think surprises the goalie who gets a piece of it. His third, assisted by Newhook. Uh, he, later on, he later had a goal, which we'll get to, which was disallowed. Um I love, I, I, I really like this player so much. And I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering if the Canadians ever get to a point where they want to go for that Zegras or they want to go for another player that, you know, I'm just bringing up Zegras just like that, Grant. It could be anybody. But if they want to go for a player that can make them better right away, like going out and acquiring a Kirby Doc, I'm wondering, instead of giving up draft picks, will opposing teams ask for Joshua Roy 
And will the Canadians be willing to give them up? Because well, like shuffling, this is very, uh, shuffling, very encouraging uh, player. Yeah, well, why give up a uh, guy that is going to be on your in your top six to get a guy that's going to be in your top six? That doesn't really, you know. I mean, what? That's one of the guys. The main guy, like he, he's got second line potential all day, Tony. You know, you and I have both discussed that. So a hundred percent doesn't so mean. Why would you? Why though. would you trade him to get a second liner? It does. Well, it all depends know. on that. All depends on how how many years you think it'll take for him to have significant contributions on a second line. Mm -hmm. You and I believe he's a second liner, right? Going forward, yeah. we believe yeah. he's a second liner. I, you know, I'd love to put him on the third line for two years, give him time to be able mm -hmm. to develop and grow into his game. Maybe a year and a half. Boom! All of a sudden, he's on the mm -hmm. second line. That doesn't mean they feel that way. I mean, at least, uh, you know, I don't know what Gordon and Hughes are thinking, but. If he keeps scoring three goals every two games and one disallowed, then he'll be a he'll be a legitimate second liner soon enough, Tony. He's, yeah, he, yeah, he's progressing. It seems like weekly here. So he just, I think, he needed to adjust to the speed of the NHL, and yeah. uh, it looks like he's he's getting more comfortable by the by the shift almost. So uh, yeah, no, I think he's probably here to stay, and uh, he's a top nine player on the on the Canadians now and uh one more good off season training come back to camp confident no no right from camp what what the NHL is all about I could see him uh you know being a serious uh right from day one being on the second line next year with Doc they just got to find uh got to find that other piece or maybe it's new hook you know maybe Maybe you try new hook for a year with Doc and Roy as your second unit. That, I mean, that has a lot of potential. There's some nice, yeah. There's a nice variety there. Doc's got the size, you know. Uh, <clears throat> new hook's got that speed. <clears throat> Roy with his all round uh, vision and and shot and skill. That uh, that might not be a bad second line next year if they can't if they end up not being able to find. You know, if the price is too high to get a, another top yeah. six piece, but I think you, you could do worse than to start the next season with those three as your second unit. Wouldn't be surprised if that kid finds himself on the first unit of the power play one day. Mm. Having said that, I fully realize that there's going to be a lot of competition. Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield, Uri Slavkowski, Kirby Doc, uh, Mike Matheson, yeah. or Lane Hudson, maybe even David Reinbacker one day. I mean, there's going to yeah. be a lot of competition who knows who they're going to draft fifth or sixth this year but you know I, I i think with some time and some space he can be very lethal uh, i'm a little surprised they haven't tried him on the first unit this year like since he's been up to, to yeah. me I, I like he's a better he's a better passer than new hook and new hook is most effective i think when he's utilizing his speed and he doesn't really do that when he's standing around in the offensive zone on the power play. I, I don't mind new hook on the power play, but to me, I think Roy gives him a better playmaking option. Uh, especially, you know, they can get him in the slot and, and start feeding him the passes there and what he can do with, because I, I saw it two years in Sherbrooke that uh, he can be lethal on the power play. So get him with the smartest, uh, most skilled players on the Habs. They yeah. haven't, they haven't really done that yet. You know, he's yeah. been on the second line and uh, second power play. Well, I'm looking forward. And I realized, you know, it was the same. They did the same thing with Slavkowski, right? They're not rushing these guys. Uh, um, but especially with nothing to lose, like they aren't making the playoffs. So why not uh, see how he looks on the top unit down the – I hope they give him some, some first power play unit time down the stretch here. To see if he's a guy that you know, starting as soon as next year, could possibly be on that first unit, because I think he can play. I, I saw it in Sherbrooke. He can play the point, like he can run things back there with uh, with yeah. Matheson. You know, it, 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 I don't see why he couldn't be on it. But with then when Doc comes back, then like you say, which of those, which of the top four guys would you, you know, would you sit? It'd be uh, yeah. Uh, you know, like you got Slavkowski, Suzuki, uh, 
Caulfield, Doc. Well, which one, which one of those guys would would uh, wa replace? So it, it might be a, become a pleasant problem, but at least you know, audition them down the stretch. Yeah. I hope and give them a look I, and and see. If Lane Hudson, because the second Lane Hudson is on this team, in my mind, there's no doubt that he's going to be on the power play. He's going to be on the yeah. first wave. But if Lane Hudson is not on this team next year, if Joshua Roy really comes into his own and Kirby Doc is back, I mean, they yeah. went with five forwards at one oh, point maybe. before going with Michael Matheson. It might happen yeah. again. Yeah. You know, Logan, mind Logan, you, may you, a ton of may you might be yeah. a possibility too, you know. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's a heck of a weapon on the power play with a shot yeah. and he can pass too. So, uh, you know, I think next year will be, they're being patient with Mayu, but next year he'll uh, he'll likely get a shot and uh, he might be the guy on the power play next year. And then Hudson, I think Hudson will probably need a year in the, in the AHL, but you, you never know. That kid's beat the odds. Uh, a few times, you know, didn't expect him to be <laughs> lead all uh, defenseman in scoring as a freshman in college either. And he yeah. did that. So. You know, small guys, uh, when they persevere, it's because they have a character and a heart that is just it's something else. I mean, we saw it in Montreal and, you know, of yeah. course, with, with Brendan Gallagher for a very, very long time. I mean, Gallagher yeah. for a guy was a fifth round pick. I mean, there's a lot of people who thought that Gallagher was not going to get drafted. And Gallagher not only got drafted, Gallagher's had a very long career in the National Hockey League. Brendan Gallagher's made a lot of money. Brendan Gallagher had a couple of 30 goal seasons. Brendan oh. Gallagher wears an A on his jersey. I mean, we can debate what he is now. I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but that's not the point, right? Okay, let's get back yeah. to the score sheet if we can. All right, okay. Uh, Brady Shea, who seems, by the way, who doesn't score a ton of goals, but it seems like every time he plays the Montreal <laughs> Canadiens for whatever it is, uh, he yeah. scores a goal. He actually had two in this hockey game tonight. He ties it at one in period number one. In period number two, it was Neeson assisted by Drury and Chatfield. And then Joshua Roy scores a goal that you would uh, you would have thought tied up the hockey game, and you're like, wow, the kids got two out of two. Um, but um, it was disallowed on the ice for a new hook. Uh, crashing into Anderson. What did you think yeah. of the call? Yeah. Oh, it was the right call. As soon as yeah. I, I didn't notice it at the time, but once they showed the replay, it's like, oh, okay. That's coming. Well, back. I didn't notice it at the time, but like when when Joshua Roy backhands that puck in, like Anderson's like laying on his stomach and he's got a leg in the air and you're like, hold on a second. That's pretty unconventional. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not hashtag. Yeah. He doesn't usually do that. Yeah. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and, and nobody did it like the dominator either. All right. It, <laughs> that it, was a number three. Sorry. That the, was a uh, nice toe drag though, eh, Tony? The toe, the toe drag, drag was amazing. The toe yeah. drag was amazing. Yeah, he's got. Yeah. So, you know, you talked about the talent and the game slowing down. Like, yeah. Th that's obviously it, it's a skill in his in a, in a skill set. It's a tool in his toolbox. There are those hands and that quick toe drag, but it takes a while for you to kind of get comfortable at the National Hockey League level, the whole speed, and say, okay, when when do I find the right time to do it? I'm going to end up getting hit. And now it all comes to with not only timing and adaptation, but also confidence. Right? This kid's oh, confidence absolutely. is at a high right now. Like he knows he can play with these guys. He, yes. And so. And he's a strong yeah. kid too. You like he's not not easy to knock off his feet. He's pretty he's pretty solid. So it's another bonus. Brady Shea gets in behind Cole Caulfield. It was the Carolina Hurricanes that gone on the power play, and then Mike Matheson did a real good play to use his speed. He was brought down to negate that power play, and it ends up a four on four. And then there was a real there was a there was a stretch pass that found Shea as he got in behind Caulfield in all alone. On Montembeau, he makes it. Uh, uh, he makes it three-two, and then of course, uh, the Canadians pull Montembeau and Tara Vinen to Svechnikov, who goes around Michael Matheson and into an empty net uh, from halfway there. Uh, he seals the deal and makes it four-one Carolina. So Roy one nothing, Shea one one, Neeson two one, Shea again three one, and uh, Svechnikov four one. And there you have it. And now it looks like the Carolina Hurricanes are going to add Gensel. And if they do, um, Carolina's top six is going to look something like this. Aho with Tara Vinen and Zvechnikov. And Drury 
with uh, Nick, um, Nesh Cash and Gensel. And Neeson ends up going down on the third line with uh, Stahl and Seth Jarvis, most likely, and got a pretty good team. By the way, you know which pickup I like today? Not a big-time pickup, not a flashy pickup, but I love Colorado acquiring Brandon Duhame. He's a big time energy player. I that that guy is one, I think he's one of the best role players in the National Hockey League. Yeah. No, Colorado's making some nice moves. They're uh they're going for it. Vegas, Colorado, boy, that's going to be a battle royale if they end up playing. My god. Uh, at some point. And then Edmonton too. Uh, I mean, uh those three teams are uh, and and Winnipeg's right in the mix. Uh, you know, the West's going to be fun uh fun to watch this year. It's I wouldn't put too much money down on any team because I think there's three or four that, uh, that that can definitely come out of the West. Winnipeg, I don't believe. No, maybe not, but no. uh, I don't know. Uh, Hella Buck, you know, the, the, when you have that Great goalie, goalie, when you Great have goalie. that goalie that can steal a series, we saw it with, with Price more than once, you know. Yeah. Canadians won some series that they di didn't have the better talent. We can safely say, but Price, uh, you know, Price was a difference. Hashik uh, back yeah. in the Buffalo days when they went to the Cup final, yeah. that, they had no yeah. business being in the Cup final. So yeah, I love Josh Morrissey on defense too. And Morrissey him. is fantastic. I mean, we saw him live that yeah. night, Tony, and remember me telling you just how impressed yeah. I was with that guy. And he's been yeah. on a streak lately, at, like putting up great yeah. point totals now too, right? So Team Canada uh, Olympics, eh? No doubt. Team Monaghan, Canada Olympics, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, all, all day. Monaghan yeah. uh, is, is really helping that team too, though. So they're, they're a dark horse. I wouldn't, because of Morrissey, Hellebuck, uh, you know, guy like Monaghan fortifying that top six. Their top six is good and their defense is solid. And I think they have the best goalie in the league. So that can take you a long way. You know, if they, if they stay healthy and some other teams have some injuries in the playoffs, who yeah. knows, you know. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, I'd like to see Winnipeg um, do well. Of course, you know, after uh, we won the great cup off of them, let's, let's give them, uh, let's give them, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. a playoff winner too. Uh, all right. Okay. Um, so who do you think won that deal? The Colorado deal, uh, Casey Middlestat, Bowen Byram. Well, and I think there's another example of what you talk about that if you draft a defenseman in the top four or five, if you really want to go out and get a forward, you can always trade them, and a team's going to give you that forward. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They took what they thought was the best asset at four overall, and uh, you know, just like Seth Jones, uh, fourth overall, traded him for Johansson when they needed a, what they thought was a top two center. Um, same deal here. Like, uh, it's a deal that it's it's a need for need deal, right? Um, yes, Colorado's pretty strong on defense. They they needed a second line center. They tried it with Johansson, that didn't work. So they needed to pick one up. He just happens to be Buffalo's top scorer this year. So hey, you pick up top scorer from another team, and it costs you a, a young defenseman that's kind of maybe struggling to find his full potential on a very good team. He'll go to Buffalo. There'll be less pressure. He's not in a you know a win now situation. He'll uh, be able to. They'll be patient with him, develop him yeah. properly, give him lots of opportunity that he wasn't necessarily getting. You know he'll get power play more power play time and and top four minutes in uh, Buffalo and uh, yeah. you know pair him with a power down the road or or yeah. uh, Darlene. Hey, that's a pretty nice. Uh, you know he's not playing with a with a power or a Dalene right now, and he wasn't playing yeah. with those in Colorado. So yeah, and a I lot of people are yeah, a lot ahead. of people Grant are wondering why they traded their you know their leading point getter on their team, who's a guy that they drafted eighth overall back in two thousand and seventeen as a centerman. But having said that, let's not forget in twenty nineteen they drafted center Dylan Cousins at seventh overall. Um, yeah. and, uh, they, they drafted Savoy a ninth overall in 2022. They Oastland, drafted Oastland. I think you were very high on him at 16 yeah. overall. I think you wanted Coolidge. the Canadians to nab him some way, somehow, but yeah. Well, I mean, they've got Quinn, they've got Paterka, they've got Coolidge, they've got Savoy. Rose Rosen was a top 14 pick. 
Osland. They're top. stacked. So they, they've got all sorts of uh, under 25 forward talent. So they, yeah. and I mean, Thompson, by all rights, should be their leading scorer. He's having an off year, but he'll bounce back. He's still relatively young too, right? Yeah. No, they're, yeah. they're, they're absolutely stacked with young uh, forwards going uh, forward here. And I think they want to give these guys opportunity too. Now with middle stack gone, they'll be able to call up um, uh, probably Coolidge and give them a top six opportunity down the stretch here. They got nothing to lose. Give them an audition for next year as a top six guy in, on the team. Yeah. yeah. Good. Anytime, anytime I saw him play against Laval this year, he lit them up. So uh, Coolidge yeah. is a darn good player too. And then yeah. you know, Oakland comes in next year, Savoy. So they're yeah. – they're stacked with young talent. So it just made yeah. sense. They needed a defenseman. They got a former top four pick that, that that's that young. I mean, good deal for them. It's very similar to yeah. the Goche for Drysdale deal, really, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's Buffalo. They're going to find a way to screw it up for sure. Hey, uh, <laughs> one talk to you about one of your next favorite uh, topics and which is Slavkowski. I mean, we talked about the fact that he's taking huge strides this year. And once again, the first month was maybe a little bit difficult and then it took a while. And then all of a sudden Marty St. Louis put him with Suzuki and Caulfield and took him off after a couple of games. Then he's had him on there uh, pretty steady now for the last month and a half or whatever it is. And at one point he was really, really taken off. We knew it was not going to be sustainable because of course, I mean, if he was going to be able to do that all the time, uh, that would have been pretty remarkable. But the last couple of weeks is play um, in defensive zone coverage, uh, which I know is it's it's a uh, it's it's not on the kid at all. It's normal, okay? It's normal. It's called growing pains. All right. What are you yeah. seeing though? What are you seeing? Yeah, uh, I'm seeing a a, a 19 year old that's still uh, you know playing in the best league and 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 getting learning lessons you know yeah i think this is great i mean it doesn't rather rather i'm ha having a few struggles defensively when it doesn't when you actually want the team to lose tony then mm -hmm. yeah when you want the team to win you know <laughs> like yeah. you, you know this is all for later right a year or two down when they're in the playoff hunt and they're going or in the playoffs you know hopefully he he learns the lessons of i mean he'll be they'll have him in the video room and show okay you know this is where you you should have done this you should have done that uh it hasn't all been his fault he he's been on the like i mean like last night the two goals where were the defensemen they're not last night last game well like, you know you he you ended up he ended up having to, having to cover for the defenseman and yeah but he's not a defenseman so Right, a guy made a play on him that, well, you know, that's not where, like, <laughs> he, yeah. he, he, so you can blame him for it because he was the guy that's in the screen, you know, when the, the highlight of the goal is there. There's Kofkowski. Yeah, but that shouldn't have been him there anyway. It should have been the defenseman. So I, I, get, I cut him a bit of slack with that. And then tonight, the goal there, Caulfield, like, just as Mameso said, you know, they or what they said at the intermission, like uh, Kali, Koliakovo said, like Caulfield it should have stopped the guy from going in. They're at the, it, yeah. it was two minutes into a shaft and Slaff is out there. And then the guy comes in. You, I mean, you know, you can blame Slaff for it completely, or you can blame Caulfield somewhat. You can blame them being tired. So it, it he's been okay. Oh, Two or three times last night, he saved goals too, right? He yeah. made two or three really outstanding defensive plays last game that, uh, you know, but you look at the highlights and you just see him standing there when two goals go in. So, well, he was bad defensively. Well, he was good and bad. So there, there's going to be inconsistency with a 19-year-old defensively. I don't know that there's ever been a 19-year-old that was great uh, you know, was great defensively. It there, there's growing pains like Crosby and Bergeron. Maybe you could argue, but they're freaks, right? Freaks of nature, yeah. those two. So, yeah. Um, at the same time, it, it looks like this is a club that's been really confused this season with when yeah. playing man to man, when playing zone. It, there seems to be a lot thing. of confusion. Yeah, that's right. You know, 
And he, I mean, he's, he's, he, I, I think it's good. I think it's good that he's having this adversity. Uh, I mean, that line's been on for, geez, I don't know how many goals against in the last three weeks, but I haven't checked their plus minus, but just goals against the, the Suzuki line. Man, there's been got games when they've been on for three, you know, a lot of multiple games, goals against. I think it's good. I think uh, he'll learn from it. You could see uh, – did you see the look on his face when they showed him on the bench after? Yeah. Like he was just steaming, you know. So yeah. Yeah. they don't have to tell him. He knows, you know. All right. Yeah. I got to – I can't be standing there watching the puck. I've got to – but – we, we've seen him play fantastic defensively for whole games for weeks at you know a couple of weeks stretch and stuff so it's it's all a, a, a ryan paling i remember you know interviewing him when he first uh -huh. came up and they, they they said you've got to learn to be consistent and it's just for a young player it may be the most important thing is to learn to play consistently night in night out at the NHL level and it's not easy and it took paling probably till this year to finally gain that consistency but now look at him he's uh he's uh turned into a heck of a he he's been really a uh, really big part of Philadelphia being in the playoffs this year uh you know at 24 right so yeah yeah it, it's it's learning to play consistently uh but, you know uh, and it takes time. There aren't many teenagers that, that can pull it off night in, night out. I'm not worried about it. I think it's just uh, growing pains and that he'll learn from it. Next year, he'll be even better. All right. Okay. Uh, who's not a Montreal Canadian after 3 p.m. tomorrow? Oh, may not be anybody. I I wish I could say that, you know, I'd start, I'm starting to wonder who's going to take Tanner Pearson. I don't think anyone will take Tanner Pearson. Uh, I find it odd that Pizzetta sat out eight straight games. Funny, I wrote an article about it about a month ago that, you know, this kid, this guy should never be a healthy scratch again. I showed all these great numbers that showed all that he was doing for the team. And then he, now he hasn't played in eight straight games. Yolone and uh, they're giving you a loan in every, you know, can, you know, if it doesn't work out here, he better not complain that he didn't get a chance. I no. get it. He's no. on a fourth line and plays fourth line minutes, but you got to earn to get more minutes. He doesn't earn it, man. No, I I'm don't very know. Very disappointed, Yelonen. Very disappointed. Very inconsistent when you talk about yeah. you know a player that's inconsistent, right? Uh, I I wonder if they've been what are they shopping him? Is that why they've been doing this? But who? I mean, what would you get for him? It'd be seventh round pick or something, you know. So. Uh, I mean, Savard, I guess, is the – if anybody is going to be picked up, I think he's the one that's most desirable at this time. He plays 20 minutes a game, and he's, he's yeah. making the league average salary. The Canadians have one salary retention spot slot available, so they could – yeah, you know, they could retain salary. I think uh, at some point tomorrow when – you know, teams are looking at, okay, well, Colorado did this. Um, Vegas picked up Hannafin. Uh, Toronto, got Toronto picked up Edmondson. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, hopefully the, a team will offer a first or a, or a, an A-level prospect because I, I believe that's what Kent is, is holding out for. And, Grant, uh, I take David Savard on my team if I was another team going to the playoffs. But I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up a big. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up a first round pick or a prospect for him. Like I, couple of picks, third and fourth. Up, you wouldn't give up a prospect. Well, a big time prospect like for David Savard, a big time prospect like a top six or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it all depends on if you think he's the missing piece to win the Stanley Cup, of course. Yeah. You know, well, like if you Tampa, they, Tampa gave up what a first, a third, and a fourth, I think, or something like that. Uh, when they yeah. traded for him, I mean, I know yeah. he's years older now, but yeah, he, he hasn't, Tampa he hasn't likes regret. to give up picks and trades. Tampa likes to give up picks and trades. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, they made a f some funny. I think they've made a couple of funny moves this year, but hey, 
you can't argue with their success. So we'll see how it works out for them. No, you can't argue with their success for sure. Uh, they've done some really good moves, but um, the the um, the Tanner Janot trade was like not that was not a no, good trade. No, they, you know uh, for for Cal Foot and a first round pick in twenty twenty five, a second round pick in twenty twenty four, a third, a fourth, and a fifth in twenty twenty three. That's yeah. a lot. Now, if you win the Stanley Cup, you say it's worth it, right? But when you don't win the Stanley Cup, that you know, and then you start saying, "Whoa, yeah." yeah. Well, they 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 made two or deal. three trades over the last three four years. That, like, I, I forget who it was, Coleman, or there were two or three guys they picked up, and it's like, why are you, like, third line guys? You know, third fourth yeah. line guys, and they're and they're throwing around first round picks like, uh, you know, like they're candy. But, you know, they won that cup, so you can't, you know, with after they made some of these moves, so you can't really argue with it too much. Nick Paul's I think it one. was a, a Barkley Goodrow. G Barkley Goodrow, you know, they they paid hefty prices for all those guys. Yeah, so, you're right. When you win the cup, it's, it's good. You think Jake Allen's going to get traded tomorrow? Uh, I've been thinking that he was going to get traded, but you – you keep hearing from the insiders that that they might be not till the off season at this point. So I kind of thought that he, it would have been by now that he would go, but uh, you know, I, part of it depends, I guess, on if Markstrom ends up finally going or not. I guess, but it's looking yeah. like he, if he doesn't, then maybe. Uh, um, but the teams like New Jersey that were in the market. It's almost too late for them now to, yeah, make the playoffs. So, so do, they, to, do they trade for a goalie now? Maybe not. Yeah, earlier in the week was on Monday actually. Eric Engel said that in his opinion, the Canadians were going to trade Savard and pay like half his salary. Okay, mm -hmm. I say this. I, I said no. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if Savard's traded. Obviously, right? Like it's it, either way. I would not bet money on him staying or going. Okay. Right. But if I had to guess, I would say this. I would say that that salary the Canadians are going to retain and pay is going to be on a Jake Allen trade at the draft. I think they're going to pay money on the Jake Allen trade, and I think David Savard will be traded next year at the deadline. That's mm -hmm. Or, you know, two, three yeah. weeks before the deadline, a month, maybe the way Monaghan went or whatever. But that's that's the way I see it going down. Like, how do you... How do you trade Jake Allen without giving up money? Of course, or unless you end up picking up a player, and that there, there, there could be something else, right? You end up yeah. picking up a player who's making the same kind of money as Jake Allen, who's got one year left on his deal. That could happen too, right? You yeah. Know, you would, well, you I mean, when the best it. when the best asset that Joel Joel Edmondson gets back is a third round pick, it's difficult to see a team offering a first for Savard. Because yeah. In my opinion, Edmondson's maybe even a better, you know, defender. Certainly at playoff time, he he showed it with Montreal and he showed it with St. Louis that he can just be, yeah. a, he can be a minute muncher, uh, bigger, probably a little more mobile than Savard. So yeah. he's every bit as good as Savard, and the best he could get was a third and a fifth. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it may well be that he Hughes doesn't get what his asking price is and that Savard remains with the Habs. Look, if I'm, if I've had some chats for David Savard, he's out there. I'm not playing them tonight. The trade deadlines mm. tomorrow, three o'clock. Well, that's the Can other thing. Right? That, that, you know, that, that's another thing. I, obviously there's nothing really close to, there's nothing really close or, or he there's nothing on the there. table right now. It could be tomorrow, but right now there's nothing on the table. Yeah. That's why they played him. But sure. you know, all these other trades are going down and they've already happened. And it, if there's nothing on the table now, I don't know. I, it, it's leaning towards it. If, if I were to have to bet it, I'd be more 40, 60 than 60, 40 or higher that, uh, that he's staying. I think he's, yeah, I think, you know, I think the odds are higher that he won't be uh, going at the uh, deadline tomorrow. And I mean, who else? You know, Pearson. No one's picking him up. 
Armia, well, I don't know. Maybe. But, you know, everyone, I think, knows how inconsistent he could be. He, Yeah, he's playing okay now, but that can change in a heartbeat. Um, I mean, he was great in the playoffs in that fourth-line role for the Canadians when they went to the cup final. Maybe a team says, oh, you know, let's let's take him and hope that he that we get the good Armia. But uh, I, Kovacevic might be the most likely of anybody perhaps to go because when, uh, you know, everybody's healthy, what, he's just sitting, uh, he's sitting in the stands? Like Struel's right, back yeah. now, yeah. he's playing yeah. well. And I, and I look, I think you could be right on that one, but I had an interesting chat the other day with Craig Button was on Wednesday. And I, you know, we talked about Kovacevic and, you know, you get the feeling that Kovacevic's ceiling is not very high, right? Grant, like he right. almost to the point where he won't get that much better. He kind of is limited and he kind of is what he is and who he is. Right. Yeah. But having said that, when you're limited like that, um, and you're going to end up being a third pairing defenseman and you're always going to be like 1.3, 1.4 or less. Okay. And right now he's in an, you know, he's an under a million, but at one point he's going to go to one, two, one, three, one, four, but he'll never make a lot of money in a salary cap world. Every mm. team would love to have one or two guys on the blue line like that. You know, you're five or you're six or you're seven. And, you know, he's a player in his mid twenties. He's a right-handed defenseman. He's six foot five. I get it. Doesn't always play like it, but. Uh, so I hear you and I agree with you that I don't think they love him as much as they love a lot of other defensemen on the team. We know there's a plethora of defensemen. They can't all stay here. But Kovacevic, I think, could be with his limited talent, a good acquisition for another team because he'll give you cost certainty Yeah, for a long time. Yeah. And I mean, I guess... If you trade him and you call up a young defenseman, well, there's going to be a young defenseman sitting out, and you don't necessarily want that either, right? So maybe right now you want him to be the seventh defenseman because he's not really a big part of the future going forward, right? There's other guys that are, you know, the young guys, right? So yeah. perhaps in that, you know, in that – when you look at it that way, well, maybe we keep him around as the seventh guy. He's a character guy. He's not going to complain about it. He'll play now and then. You bring him into the lineup, and he's your spare, right? Because um, if you if you trade him, you, then you got to call up a, a defenseman. Well, then is you know who's sitting out? Because you got seven defensemen, unless yeah. they play seven, unless they play seven defensemen. But we saw. We saw how that worked earlier in the year. It wasn't, uh, it's not the ideal situation. I don't like seven defensemen. So, um, it, it, but, you know, if a team comes along and says, well, we need that, we need some depth on defense. We need a six, seven guy. If we have injuries, he can play on our third pairing and he won't hurt. Um, here's a third round pick or a second round, probably not a second round pick, but you, yeah. you'd have to consider it. I think the, he might be end up being the the guy that goes and the only guy that goes. But uh, I don't think I I don't foresee it being a really active trade deadline for the Habs. Their their big move was Monahan, and and I don't see uh, much much really brewing. Well, the interest level in Montreal is definitely going to be elevated over the next three days because tomorrow's NHL trade deadline day. On Saturday, the Montreal Canadiens will host the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's a rivalry that has been going on for over 100 years. And on Sunday night, CF Montreal will be in Fort Lauderdale and they visit Lionel Messi and friends, who, by the way, scored an absolute beauty again tonight versus <laughs> Nashville. I had one eye on that, uh, and that was really, really something. Grant, I thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, and uh, always uh, appreciate your contributions. Once again, check out recruits.ca. Check out the website. Uh, Miami just tied it. Inter-Miami just tied it versus Nashville, I've been told by Sammy and Master Control. 
Sammy, thank you very much for that. Subscribe <laughs> to uh, Grant's website for $3.99 per month on a monthly basis. You're absolutely going to love it. It's going to be a one-stop shop in Montreal Canadiens fans and those who love to pay attention to what's going on with the young players and the prospects will not be disappointed. Grant, I think I'm going to get to bed. I even uh, contemplated doing the show tonight, to tell you the truth, because I'm going to need my beauty sleep because tomorrow I'm going to do something that I've never done in my 22 years of actually working in the sports media in Montreal. And that is I'm going to be on television live on NHL trade deadline day from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wow. On TVA sports from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then I'm going to come home, take a shower, <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> wake up a couple of hours later and then I'll be back tomorrow night at 10 p.m. to bring you the sick podcast once again I'll be in for Matt O'Han and we'll recap all the trades so tomorrow whether the Montreal Canadiens make a deal or two or three or they don't make a deal I will be back and we'll talk about either the deals they made or the deals they didn't make thank you Grant we'll talk to you again soon Thanks, Tony. You're very welcome. There you have it, Grant McCagg. Special thanks, of course, to Energy Transportation Group, to Labitta TB, to Playground, and I'm going to give you the Accent Insurance moment of the game. For me, the moment of the game, it's coming right up. Accent Insurance moment of the game. You know, the Carolina, the Canadians go up by a score of one to nothing on a goal by Joshua Roy in period number one. Brady Shea ties it up at one. That's at the end of the first period. They go into the second. Neeson puts Carolina on top by a score of two to one. And Joshua Roy scored what appeared to be the game tying goal at two. Uh, but the goal was called off because um, uh, of interference, of course, on the goaltender. And so that goal is called off. And once that goal was called off, it was Newhook that went right into uh, Anderson. And once that goal was called off, for me, that was a turning point because on the period number three, they go in and period number three, Brady Shea ends up scoring what turned out to be uh, kind of like the nail in the coffin goal to make it 3-1 and uh, or the insurance goal and the 4-1 goal ended up probably being the nail in the coffin or the insurance goal, which depending on which way you look at it, either way, speaking of insurance, for me, the insurance accent insurance moment of the game was Joshua Roy's goal which could have been his second of the game, which was disallowed. Special thanks to our sick army, our sick community. Once again, for watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends about it. We're growing each and every day. The numbers have never been higher than they have been in the last couple of days. Uh, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface. I think it took a while. It's starting to kick in slowly, but surely. And so once again, please leave us a five-star review on Apple. If you can, it's our way of feeling the love. Uh, we try and give you our best um, five days a week. 12 months a year, um, we don't take any time off. Well, we do on weekends, of course, that is. Uh, but then it will be back tomorrow night. On Friday night, we'll be back once again. Enjoy NHL trade deadline day. And if you're going to watch somewhere, hopefully you can watch me on TVA Sports. I'll be there tomorrow for 8 a.m. I'll be on air up until about 6 or 7 p.m., I've been told. One thing I know is uh, I'll be bringing in all the pastries for all of them. I'm sure they're going to appreciate that. It's a beautiful thing. I bring them pastries. They keep on calling me back. It's fantastic. I have it all figured out. Jeez. Um, pretty grateful that uh, they're having me in on such a big day. Um, my first time ever. Better late than never. Have a good one. For Agnello, Sammy, and Juliana, Master Control, they're Cavallaro. I'm Marinero. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.